The Square Ball Podcast. Hello there. Welcome to Propaganda. Dan here with Michael with Moscow White as we dive into the clips in the football world this week. Maybe just a little bit lighter on the Leeds front this time, do you think? Because it wasn't, I mean, it's not been a great week. There's about 30 seconds of Blackburn that'll do. Right, we will get to that in a matter of seconds. First of all, the show is brought to you in association with, by, with the assistance of Levi Solicitors. Mm. You heard of those guys? I have, yeah. They do some good services. Uh, legal services, I hope. Legal services with a discount. Mm-hmm. If you go via our link, which is levisolicitors.co.uk slash the square ball. Yep. Isn't it? It is. Michael. Which way is the slash? Um, I would go with a forward. You go yeah. forward. You don't fancy a backslash? I don't know if that works. Try it. Give it a try. Give it yeah, a, it's maybe something it... fun for people. If they're bored of just... I'm going to try it now. Maybe it'll... Finding, finding the link normally, they could... A little bit of adventure. It might unlock an even greater discount. I mean, I wouldn't... Who knows? <laughs> Probably I, I under think that's, like... That's mis-selling, yeah. 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 I said it might. I'm only asking questions. We've got some Matt Letizia coming up in a bit, actually. Lads, it works both ways. Really? How exciting is that? That just goes to show how flexible those guys can be. <laughs> or uh, internet browsers, one it, or the it other. It corrects it back to a, a forward slash, but it will accept that backslash and just get on with it. It's like on Google now, you can you can search you can search things with the worst type in the world, and Google goes, I know what you mean. I know you were searching for like Ipswich fixtures, even though you've written Ipswich fixtures. Mm-hmm. But it, it knows. It knows. Is that it what will you... give you some clickbait article that's nothing to do with what you were looking for anyway. <laughs> Indeed. Like light fittings in Ipswich or something like that. Anyway, uh, we thank Levi's for their support on the podcast. If you need some legal services, there are a range of them. They're listed handily on the website, which you can access with your forward slash or your backslash, uh, including residential pop- property disputes. Mm. Just to name one of them. Professional negligence, such as a referee not spotting a handball, and so on and so forth. We haven't, we haven't used that one for a bit, have we, about referees for a few weeks anyway? No. Anyway, levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball for details. And uh, propaganda is is underway. We're off. We're out of the, the traps. We're out of the blocks. We're running down the track towards the finish line. We, we're not really running, are we? We're no, sort of we're, we're ambling. Limping, dragging crawling whatever it is right let's get the 30 seconds undusted then shall we this who's this blackburn rover seas right fine i'm glad you had a nice time rovers today were defensively amazing uh, i've got to give it to them the leads were, were good they, they were of course all the ball all the ideas they had a few a good a handful of chances but don't get don't, don't rule out rovers here we had two or three chances where we could have scored before smodic tucked the ball away uh, late on uh, in in this match so uh, we we had a couple of chances that we we failed to convert but um, uh, you know what? This one, this is a, this is our first win uh, against Leeds in a long, long time, and how important that win will be. I like his enthusiasm. His delivery is energetic and emphatic, and I'm pleased for him. Is uh, the implications of it being called Blackburn Rover Seas that he's not based in Blackburn? I imagine so. That's probably why it sounded cheerful. Mm. <laughs> Possibly. It's all those holes, isn't yeah. it? He gets all the benefit of enjoying the football and doesn't have to live there. It's, it's funny how when you've got a good record against teams, you don't notice, do you? You just sort of see them on the calendar and it just passes you by. Whereas teams that you you know we always do badly against, you're like, ah, oh, fucking hell. Well, I was going to say, like, when last week... I know, because I had no idea we had a good record against Blackburn. Yeah, in this last week's member show, um, I identified Oldham as being problematic for me from my childhood. Mm. Still stuck with me all these years because we had a terrible record against them in the 1980s. Anyway, that's enough from uh, Leeds United world this week, isn't it, boys and girls? We'd won seven of the last eight against Blackburn. There you go. Ahead of um, Saturday, so what could possibly have gone wrong? Should we just laugh at some other people? Yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to get straight into other championship stuff or do you want to go via Premier League? Which Let, direction do you want to go? Let's go via the Premier League. Let's experience the Premier League because that's not going to happen, is it? Well, anytime soon hey well even if you're in the Premier League and you're the richest club in the world sort of you can still be unhappy so this is a bloke we first heard from in December actually when PSG were given a late penalty against Newcastle and um, he wasn't very pleased about it they need the most cheating at VR decision ever it was never a penalty in a million years <laughs> I mean, no one's cheated, have they? Though it's it's just it's just the incompetence. It's, it's what? It's cheating. We were robbed. No, it's not. It's not cheating. It's it, it's incompetence. Well, oh, okay. Well, 
cheating. No, I'll, I'll get rid of the cheating word. No, no, I mean, you can, look, you're passionate about it, Pete. You can say what you want. I'm absolutely gutted. Me team have given absolutely everything tonight. Yes. Yes. Can I say something, Mike? Like, we've got a 17-year-old playing tonight, and I hope the whole world who's watched them tonight in Lewis Miley what were you two doing at 17? Cleaning boots. The more I watch it in slow motion, the more of a disgrace it gets. Don't it's so it. bad. It's making us cry watching them. Uh, uh, it's, it's just making us bring tears. Cause, uh, mm. Yes, we PSG had chances. I'll, get, I'll agree with you there, Jason. You know what I mean? We've had the group of death. And now, our last group game, I'm so confident now mm. we will batten the man at home in two weeks. Mm. And I'm telling you, Dortmund will want to top that group. Did they? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, they didn't. It didn't work out well for him. Uh, they won 4 0, though, this weekend in Newcastle, didn't they? Yeah, against Tottingham, didn't they? Yeah, so that was. Uh... So that was good, surely. But they had this guy back on. Normally, Gabby Egg Bonlahor on TalkSport is a bit transparent with his wind-ups and people will see through it and be like, oh, he's just doing that yeah. thing again. But this guy has failed to see this um, and he's he's getting absolutely irate that Gabby's saying that they're going to they have to sell players uh, ahead of um, buying them in summer. And if you've seen this on um, on Twitter or on socials, it has the luxury of the pictures from in studio, doesn't it, at TalkSport? And you can see them, uh, the pair of them just chuckling away to themselves like a pair of naughty little schoolboys. And Ag Bonlahor, he knows exactly what he's doing here. Gabby, you're about this FFP nonsense you do know. Aston Villa have an FFP club this summer as well, don't you, mate? So I know when you're talking about Alexander Isak earlier. Yeah, good plan. And, and it's... And if any clubs want to buy him... How much would he cost Aston Villa, mate, to buy him? You just couldn't afford him. Top players like Isaac want to play Champions League, mate. You can't offer it, that. It, can, I, can I explain something to you, please, Gabby, please, about the FFP? You do know Aston Villa have also got to sell this summer, so you're in the same mess as we are, all because of the little cartel top six want their own little cartel of their own little Premier League. That's not true, though, is it, really? Yes, it is true. It's not. But you're the richest club in the world, you all, vote, you, you all vote for it. The whole league votes for these things to come in. We, we're, the rich, we're the richest club in the world, but we're not allowed to spend because Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham decided they'll make the rules. <laughs> that, that, that's not technically true, mate. Yes. Peter, stop shouting at us, Peter. Pete, it's not true. Pete, it's not true. You all vote. Everything that happens in the Premier League, all the clubs vote on. Pete, 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 you won 4 0 today, mate. Cheer up, yeah? I'm I'm ecstatic we won because I know why. Because it'll stop talking to the cartel club getting in the Champions League. Peter, can I ask you one question, though, Peter? Yeah? If Aston Villa want to buy Isaac, how much do we have to pay for him, mate? 180 million. Okay. Okay. That's what you think he's worth. You're worth life um, um, billions, but you can't. You, you have to sell. You don't have to sell this summer. It's all paper nonsense. You haven't got a clue. Pete, we, Pete, Pete, we'll give you 50 million for him. So you know something? You're absolutely hilarious to listen to because you're just being spouting FFP nonsense for three months and we don't have to sell. It's so funny. What about 130 for Gumirez and Isaac? Uh, well, Bruno's release cost is £150 million, so I wouldn't even get your Bruno. So, so. You get, so 150 and 180 for two players. Wow. That's a bit steep, yeah. mate. Come on. Not PSG yeah. here. Give me when, when, when you got a, When you've got to sell players, you have to sell them. You might get you a bit more. You don't have to sell, Gabby. If you listen to what I'm saying, we don't have to sell. The papers have been talking nonsense for months. I read it in the papers that you have to sell. Well, so you believe So you believe you're a mate in the media then? People who I understand the part no, and you can't support it. No I'm smoke without fire, Pete. No smoke without fire. <laughs> the fact that he keeps biting. They, they could have kept him there all day. Yeah. It was kind of can, we, can we throw to you here, Moscow, for uh, for your interpretation of, of... Is it Pete, the uh, the caller who keeps doing that? Because we do like your Jordy accent. Oh, I'm not doing Jordy <laughs> on the back of it. We've heard enough of it. He's done it all himself. <laughs> 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 we don't have this hell. I start, I'm You're not to think, listening. I'm starting to think that might be a character. It, it can't be real. He's definitely, his number must flash up on the talk spot 
switchboard and they'd be like straight on air. I was going to say, you, do you know what? Like radio secrets here, you because in the you know the phone system you can put notes about callers mm. and you can crying Pete. Yeah, you can whatever. put like a, alerts on callers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll have one like all the banners, all the all the badges. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Right, where now? Should we handle um, Lester till I die? Is is it time? It's time. It was quite. It, there's a lot. So let's let's get stuck into it. They obviously played Friday, lost to Plymouth. There was a meltdown going on. So the first um, set of clips are from there. They come back on Saturday then, having seen the Leeds and Ipswich results. So there's a slightly different tone to some of those things. But these, it's worth hearing what was going on there on Friday. Um, to start with, I think just just as a little hands across the water, a little problem that we share. What is happening? with surely a team that wants to play in the Premier League should be able to get a corner onto a player's, their own team's head. Uh, start me on that one again. I mean, it, the whole thing was a joke. The whole corner thing was a joke. Yeah, man. <laughs> right on, bruv. Let's get rid of them. What corners? Well, we've said we advocated for this under Bielsa. It only uh, helps bad teams. What did you think of, of Farker's answer about corners on Saturday? I didn't see it, actually. What did you say? He said, um, basically, we don't have the right players to score from them. Earlier in the season, when we did score from them, it was because we had Strauk, sometimes Cooper, Sam Byram, or mm. pretty tall. But then he said, those players aren't in. And if you look at the players who, even the players who are tall, Roden, uh, Ruter, don't know who else he mentioned, they're pretty much the only tall guys we've got. So they're not really got any track record of scoring from corners. So he's like, not surprised. And he then, what was quite interesting was he sort of said it's something that um, he'd like to look at in the transfer market. So it could be that next season uh, we have some eight footers going for every <laughs> every header. But yeah, it was just like with with the the players who it's kind of like I could leave. The implication was I could leave Somerville out and put in a six foot four. Mm-hmm. I could put in Charlie Creswell. Well, he didn't mention him by name, but I guess that's the the option. And then we would have a chance from corners. But then we don't have. Somerville, so it's kind of like balancing out who is in the squad, um, who should be in the team. Do we want to try and score from open play, which obviously we can't do anymore, but also like, do we want to try and score from corners? And yes, basically we don't have tall players who are good at heading. The is, is this an argument for special teams? We did say they were going to try and do some more short stuff, which might have occurred to them before now, but maybe mm. we didn't expect to be getting so many corners. Who knows? Maybe think- it's because that was all the always... The Bielsa thing, it seemed like a bit of a surprise. If we were like two in a game, we'd be like, oh, well, now what do we do? I've got an idea. What we could do then from corners, just so we don't lose possession, is we could get the corner and just boot it back to Melier and start again tippy-tapping it around mm. at the back. What do you reckon? Good idea. Good idea. I, d- I will say with the corners, it, it's a fair explanation, is that, that we don't have people who are very good at them. But the amount that end up headed out of the near post still, that seems like an error in the taking of them. Yeah. So I think I think we should work on that too. There's been a recent trend of just scoring direct from corners. I've noticed a few have gone in in the last few weeks. Mm. Should we try that? Could do that. Could just do. If you remember um, Barcelona in the Messi era, would they never put a corner into the box? It was always passed short because you just didn't have any players too could head it. So it's a bit like why don't we just? Um, yeah, sometimes we do look better. I think we maybe got a chance on Saturday when Somerville took one short to Nyonto and then we're getting into the box and it changes mm. the angle and a bit. Some things happen, but yeah, just sticking it in from Somerville or the Gruffalo uh, ain't working. But it was interesting because lots of people are like, um, somebody needs to ask Farker about this. And he was asked about it and nobody noticed. So <laughs> kind of worth, worth <laughs> bringing that he answer gave, into gave the a debate. Perfectly, perfectly reasonable answer. Yeah. yeah. Like so when somebody in the media got to ask, Phil, get on his case. So right. he starts answering it, people just booing over the top of it. <laughs> Stop explaining yeah. it. Just fix it. Wrong answer. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't answer, you know, is right. Why do we keep just pinging him at the, at the front post when we know um, we do not have tall players who are good at heading, which is basically the answer. Well, on um, on general managerial failings then, do you want to hear what they were thinking about Maresca? And the old bald, bald fraud. The bald fraud. The bald fraud. I put there, uh, Dave, uh, is this why Palmer sacked Enzo? People are going to come back and go, yeah, but look at how he was doing early on in the season, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter how we were fucking doing 10 games ago. It doesn't matter if we were 17 points clear. It's where you end up. And when you look at the demise of the club this season, he's got to go at the end of the season, hasn't he? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't like it, but 
<clears throat> we, we're devoid of ideas. I, I never I didn't think he could get any worse, but that second half was just, well, you know, just hopeless. Um, and we've known this for weeks and weeks and weeks. We've known that people, teams are sussing us out and we do the same thing every time. Mm. Uh, every time. And you, you don't, that's not a manager. That's a robot. Yeah, and we, we can't put up with it. It's not acceptable. It's embarrassing. Have a one in two. One point off the top, game in hand. And was that straight after the Plymouth game? Yes. They were top. Yes, they were. <laughs> yes. So it's it's not about where you were 10 games ago. It's about where you finish, top. <laughs> and the demise of Leicester City is that they are top. Yeah, it's true. Top of the league. They're demising their way all the way to the top. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter what's happened in the past. We find out yes. It does, because all those points on the board are from then. Well, but... speak, speaking of points... Shall we find out then? How, how many how many more are they going to get this season? Is what this clip is. But given who we've got left, where do we get our next point from? Yeah. Playoff chasing, playoff chasing, okay. playoff chasing, Blackburn. That's all we're playing. Yeah. That's who we're playing in, in, in the long and short of things. Chris, three playoff chasing sides and then Blackburn. No points. No points. And maybe some off Blackburn because we know how easy they're, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. But um, so where should they be? Who, Leicester. Where should they be? <laughs> I'm guessing. Are they going to say top? Forget automatic, mate. We don't deserve to. We do not deserve to be in the playoffs. Because had teams figured us out and known how to cope with us early in the season, we would be mid-table at best. We would be 12th at best. And this last 10 weeks has shown how frail we are mental and how easy we are to deal with. We are lucky for the first 30-odd games teams shit themselves playing Leicester because we would be, generally rightly, Chris, given our last seven or eight games form-wise, we would rightly be mid-table. I'm glad football fans are not reactionary. <laughs> it did hold a bit of a mirror up to Leeds fans did this, though, as well, because... Yeah. I think Phil's mentioned this before that there's a, a tendency to go, oh, this is actually what we are now. Yeah, we've regressed to the mean. This is the truth. This is this is truly what Leicester are. We are bad. Those games where we won every week, that was luck. This is this is now what it what we are and what we'll continue to be. If we're lucky, we might scrape twelve. Yeah. But actually Leicester are a good team. Yeah, it doesn't mean they were bad at the start of the season. There is the point that since New Year I had a look at the the table and I think they are we've got sixteen more points than them mm. since New Year, um, and it's us and Norwich who are leading the way. I think the the claims that Leeds are the best team in the division are supported by the fact that um, before Christmas, when we're all kind of um, a bit unsure about what we were, where we'd end up, we, we, we were we were third, um, and then after Christmas, we've led the division easily. Um, whereas Leicester before Christmas top. After Christmas, they are. It has been mid-table form, so we do seem to have over the season a better team than them. Why they've gone off since um, Christmas, I can understand why they're getting quite antsy about it. However, you know, you're top of the league, and you haven't lost the next four games yet, and um, the things are very, very previous and short term and maybe it'll be good for people like this when it's all over <laughs> well it's covered off there then that Leicester shouldn't go up they should actually be mid-table at best that was recorded ahead of us and Ipswich playing so let's listen to this next clip and we'll, we'll have a little think I will tell you the biggest difference between I Ipswich and, and, and Leeds right now I know and I know their form's just as bad because somehow we keep getting away with losing. And it's not going to last forever. It's not going to last this weekend. I can assure you that. I just I don't see how they do it. Because if they do, n none of us deserve to go up. That's not just Leicester Rips, which all these don't deserve to go up. If they if they somehow keep Leicester in the automatic zones with results this weekend, Chris. None of us in the top three. So none of the top three going up. So I wow. guess you're looking at Southampton, West Brom and Norwich. Congratulations. <laughs> is the, top, the new top three? I mean, this is why... It's a season, <laughs> isn't it? And yeah, it's disappointing if you end badly and it becomes difficult. But Leicester, again, still, as it stands, have won two more games than any other team since the season started. So fine. So win the league then. It's not a problem. And nobody's going to be like, oh, well, you're a bit, bit dodgy in February. We might not give you this. 
Oh. No, you win the league if you win more games and more points than anybody else. That's that's what a season's and forty six games. I think what this is proving is that forty six games is just too many. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think about forty is where everyone should just check yeah. out. Be like, it's too tiring now. Yeah, yeah and it is. And it, there's the impact on the quality of the football because you are looking at um, our team, and they all like a lot of them look um, knackered, particularly probably. I mean, not just because we were in a good spot, were we in the top two when the international break came around? That's when we should have ended the season, I know that much. Everybody at that point seemed good form, fit, happy, healthy, and then just fine, stop it there. Now it's a little bit like the um, the closing stages of the, the FA Youth Cup semi-final when the under-18s were playing Millwall on a rain-soaked pitch at Elland Road and... The last 10 minutes was basically just players lying on the floor crying because they're all 15 year olds whose legs have given out. And then the um, the sadist in the um, technical area put up a sign saying like another seven minutes of stoppage time were being played. It's like they're children, they're kids, they can't handle this. And it was just bedtime. Yep. You were watching um, kids just like running through, well, walking through mud because they couldn't run. And that's what these last um, six games of the season are feeling like. This this has gone too far. Nobody can do this anymore. We've all had enough. Um, and it is 46 games is just a, a ridiculous amount. And it means you forget how good things have been. We have got a bit of this at Leeds at the moment where it's like, you know, Farkad hasn't got a clue what, what he's doing. And I've thought with them, the whole, our midfielders don't score things. It's a valid, it's a very valid point but also those midfielders are the reason why we have the um, best defensive record in the division so it's kind of things get forgotten about that that's a crucial part of getting us to this point has been having um, this platform of midfielders in front of the back four helping us be um, much more solid than we um, than any other team in the league and then leaving it to the the front six to do the attacking um, but all that's kind of forgotten now because we've we've lost a game one game at home one <laughs> one True before that, though. We've 16 games is um, that we've won. I can't remember how I worked it out now, but it was uh, it's more than in the last two seasons put together. On yeah. the idea, home and away, I think. On the idea that none of us deserve to go up, would you actually take that? What not going up? If everyone said there's no relegation this year, so there's no one coming down with parachute payments, it's going to be the exact same division next year, and you go again. I think I'd take it. Well, if we just basically reset the whole of football for a year. Yeah, if, if someone said, look, it's like it's a bit like they talked about during COVID. So, look, you, yeah, yeah. Leicester, Ipswich, Leeds, you're all going to be here like, next year. We go again. You'll all have your own financial issues in summer that you'll have to deal with. So, I'm thinking, well, Leicester are going to start on points deduction with no players next year. So, that's fine. So, that's one team out of the way for next season. We'd have to sell, though. We'd have to sell, too. But we'd not be competing against anyone coming down with a financial advantage. I, I just think I, I would take it. Right. I know it's not going to be an offer. It's not going to be offered. Yeah, but I feel like another year in the championship would be kind of all right. Yeah, I'm as long as you don't, say. as long as you don't have to compete against Sheffield United being half decent. I'm quite comfortable if we're still here next season and almost kind of would welcome it because no, um, <laughs> because I think the team that we've got is mi- we know what it's missing is it's missing that experienced creative number ten, um, a player who can pull strings, and also it's missing like experience in general. So the players we can keep. You know, we'll have to sell Somerville. We may have to sell one other if just for um, PSR reasons, if not the fact that they want to play in the Premier League reasons. That money then being invested in Farker being able to go like, right, I'm not spending half my time messing about with Sinistera, whether he's staying or not, and players going on strike and players going out on loan, Verba saying, oh, no, yeah, I'd, I'd love to stay, right, you'll be captain. Oh, no, actually, I'll go to Germany. Right, fine, fuck off then. All that stuff isn't a factor anymore. Um, second season with a few more Farker selections to make his style of play more, hopefully more exciting, but also work better. Um, there is a scenario where we have a much better, where we would have, we could have a much better championship team next season and storm the division with 125 points. <laughs> And it would be great and we would all enjoy it and we'd all have a really good time. Whereas at the moment you can feel already, same as uh, what the Leicester fans are saying, there's some people saying, oh, well, even if Farker gets us promoted this season, just sack him anyway in the summer because we don't really want him in the in the Premier League because we've not had 
um, probably the equivalent of what we had with the um, second Bielsa season. If we'd gone up in the playoffs under Bielsa, probably would not have been quite as, you know, we'd have been going in the Premier League with Kemar Roof and Pontus Janssen and um, who else was around. We wouldn't have had, um, there would have been players that we hadn't signed yet. We wouldn't have had jean Cook and Augustin. Um, <laughs> but it, it Bailey, have, Bailey Peacock Farrell. We, yes, we would have had Bailey Peacock Farrell and Kiko Kassir in goal. Um, so there would have been, I think we, we, I don't think anybody regrets the fact that we had that second season in the championship and because it's iconic. So let's do it again. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe with um, with fewer like worldwide pandemics and all the sadness and distress that came along with it. But yeah, I am, I'm not frightened of a, another season at this level. I'm not. It'd just be disappointing. However, it's all moot because we are going up. I've, I've gone from utter despair Saturday early afternoon to when we spoke to Phil a little bit later on in the afternoon, I started to feel a little bit more reasonable. Talked myself in within about, I think it was 30 hours I, I clocked it at. Oh, now we're going up. I think we're going to flip to the opposite kind of despair now where we keep winning, but so does everyone else. Yeah. So you're left with that horrible, when's anyone going to slip up feeling? That'll return. Which, yeah. Which is familiar from earlier in the but season. But we'll, we'll run out of game soon, so thank God for that. I know, it'll be over soon. Anyway, back to, the clips, back to the clips. Let's, back to the clips. Um, let's hear actually about the um, what Leicester fans think next season may hold for them and about maybe mulling over some mistakes that have been made in the past as well. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we may as well have hung on to Rogers because of look what it's done to our club financially. We can't even afford to get rid of Mariska right now. We need to make every bit of money that we can to balance the books, but we're not even going to go up. If we don't go up, which we're probably not going to now, this is going to be a fucking car crash okay we're going to have a point seduction we're going to be stripped of players we're not going to have be able to get anyone in no one's going to want to stay and then we're going to be stuck with enzo why persist to someone else because just, we can't even afford it can we even bring in another manager under an embargo i don't know i've got a theory for you now mm. and you know insert matt Letizia pondering graphic here um leicester's players will now deliberately throw going up because if they do go up, they're going to get a points deduction and they know it's going to be shit in the Premier League next season. Whereas if they stay down, they'll get moves out of there because there's going to be a fire sale and they'll go to clubs that might be higher up in the league. So they don't want to go up with Leicester and they're deliberately going to bin it. Possible. How many people do you think will be in for Dakar? Uh Because he seems to keep missing... Je- chance he was rumored to, he was rumored to be a target of jesse marsh wasn't he when jesse was here oh was because of the uh the old um red bull connection yeah oh jesse marsh helped make him the player he is do you know actually i've not got any <laughs> clips about it but liverpool obviously lost at home this uh this weekend and it did make me sort of pleased that jesse marsh isn't as high on that list of people to have won at anfield anymore it's like oh thank god for that and i think they've lost twice They've lost consecutive games at Anfield for the first time since 2017 or something now as well. You so. know the, the defeat against Palace? Mm. Um, do you think this means more than, it, the, it does. than the Leeds defeat now? Correct. Yeah. I think the thing you're missing about Jesse Marsh, though, that you've got to remember, is that his best moment in his entire managerial history is not winning at Anfield, it was losing at Anfield yes. and swearing in the halftime a team talk <laughs> in two languages. So you can take the, the victories mm. away, doesn't matter because he's always got that to look back on. It's like, oh, God, I was great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but so about Dakar. Um, the host seems oddly defensive about him. Everyone else hates him. Um, and it's just making everyone very tired. So, oh, sorry. You, you name me you on Friday. You name your man of the match tonight. Oh, <laughs> Luke. Exactly. Exactly. Come on. It's got to be Vardy or Pratt. Surely, one of those two must be man of no, the match. No, you're being stupid now. You're no, being no, no, stupid. no, 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 yes, no. I'm not. You you're defending you him. Are. They must be man of the matches because they made such a big difference when they How came on. on for? How long were they on for? Oh, God. So it's a matter of time, is it? Well, you know? if you, yeah, if you play 70 minutes, you should have more of an impact than if you played 15. So come on, who's is. your man of the match? Name me your man of the match. I don't think anybody... Exactly. Silence says it all. No, it doesn't. It You're all. talking fucking rubbish. It doesn't say it all. Well, tell me then. Give it. me your man of the match. Tell me who was good for Leicester out there today. I didn't say there were anybody any good. I just said Dakar missed three chances. Yeah, and I'm saying tell me who was better than him. Well, the rest of them. 
Were they? Everybody else. Because, sorry, sorry, let me just put this score. Oh, sorry. Phrase. The rest of the team were better than Dakar. Oh, look yeah. at that. Plymouth beat us 1 0. That's yeah. how good the rest of the team were. Uh, yes, bollocks, mate. I mean, I'm but... sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I dropped a cup earlier on today and smashed it. Oh, it must be Dakar's fault. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't be stupid. <laughs> Just <sighs> words to live by. Please don't. <laughs> um, I wish that guy get his mic fixed as well, by the way, the crackle on it. Yeah. It's annoying having to listen to that every week for me. We do have a little decrackle module. I could try running that across it's it. Something's just not plugged in properly there, yeah. I suspect. Um, but anyway. It's Dakar's fault. Probably, it probably Whoa, is Dakar's fault. Steady on with those put downs, Moscow. Bloody hell. Anyway, he's be- the host guy, I don't know his name, he's been away and he's looked up some stats about touches on the ball because Vardy came on for Dakar also didn't do anything was the, the gist of his argument um, he's there now a, using this to sort of prod that Aussie bloke with prod and, is, hey. are you about jizzing hey not yet not, not yet. yet there is some oh there is, oh, there there is some um, but yeah it's just more people tired of him <laughs> I'm not reigniting this argument again but <laughs> yeah. I just want to say touches on the ball <laughs> touches on the ball in 60 odd minutes 65 minutes Dakar had 24 in 20 uh, 70 24 minutes Vardy had 3 what does that even fucking mean man he had so much less time than uh, Dakar did no 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 yeah but Dakar had 66 minutes so he had twice as long on the pitch Dakar and he made 24 touches Vardy had half the time, so therefore should have made 12 touches. He didn't. He only made three. That's Why what I'm saying. I'm leaving it. At draw, Walker. Do you have, like, shares on him or something, Chris? I don't get it. No, Please, do you man. hate him so much? Do you hate it's him not so hate. much? It's not a hatred. It's just a fact of it his comes lack across of ability. As a hatred well, because, it's his lack of ability. No, it's, it's only just come out tonight. I've been supporting it. No, it hasn't, actually, actually, with Luke. It's been for quite a few weeks. Answer right. me this question, Luke, right? How many players makes up a football team on the pitch? Oh, can we please move on from this? <laughs> I, know, I know sometimes we occasionally have our moments, but this is really making me feel good about this show. <laughs> just give oh, fuck it out. If you're phoning in from Australia for that, you just wouldn't. It's really easy not to be part of mm. that show. I feel like the rest of them might be better off without... It's Chris, just, he mentioned yeah. his name there. I know it's Chris's channel. I think maybe the others should. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe he's holding you. But he's a bit like Dakar. I think maybe that maybe that's why he sees himself. Is this how you lads feel about me? In Dakar, is like he's the one who gets all the criticism. Is there a new um, ch- is there a new channel coming? Am I gonna am I gonna get ousted? This is not my channel. I should stress, but just you know, do well, a hosty bit. We'll see, won't we? <laughs> we will. Have you, have you spoken to Dean this week? See, yeah, we, we won, didn't we, when Dean was there? As I well. was going to say it's all gone to shit since I came back and Dean covered my holiday. Mm. Yeah, so it's my fault, probably. One, one thing you can rely on Chris for, though, is um, is one of these. Hey, Luke, you've not had performance of the that. night award before, have you, mate? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he's always trying to slip one in before, isn't yeah, he? Yeah. <laughs> and whack a quick one out, so who knows that's an award for him. It's a wanking joke. It's a wanking joke and some manic laughter. Super. That's the one. That's yeah. the one. Kind of brightened up his whole evening. <laughs> anyway, they're still on this next clip arguing about, oh, about Dakar. Great. That's which so, is good. Which is good to hear. Just for content. So this is still their post Plymouth live yes. stream. How long is this whole thing, the live stream? It's about three hours. Fuck me. So the game ended at <laughs> 10. I think, I think that includes the game, in fairness. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I think, so anyway. The, still. Yeah, the, but still. The idea of them still going at, like, one in the morning. It's, I mean, for the guy in Australia, it's about six in the morning, I think, at this point. He's been awake, like, for 24 hours, and he's still having... <laughs> that's why he's just like, because he's not talking about Tell this. me... How many players are in a football team? Eleven. <laughs> Eleven, Chris. <laughs> and how many? And if they were all wanking, then no, we won't. <laughs> right. How much jizz would each would eleven men produce plus subs? Would it fill a teacup? Who knows? Anyway, they're arguing about Dakar. <laughs> And you get onto um, some unexpected and unnecessary slander of a Leeds United hero. Are you talking a mug or an actual teacup? Maybe an egg cup. Right, okay. 
He's a striker. He's employed to score goals. He misses things at school. But, but, but what Luke said was, is the worst signing we've ever made. But that is what Luke said. It's and the worst signing he's ever made scores four goals against Moscow in a European it's, game. We've history. had worse players than Dakar. Uh, well, I can buy it, but he's too young to see him, isn't he? Junior Lewis. Junior, Junior Lewis. Lewis. Junior Lewis, that's what I did. <laughs> How dare they? That was a stealth attack. One of the worst. I mean, they're trying to get in their heads. All right. One of the one of the worst ever signings, apparently. Is this psyops? But the... one of our best ever assistant, assistant managers. managers. They were saying before about whether a transfer embargo means they can't bring a a manager in. I don't think that's how it works. But um, yeah, if they're, if they're struggling, Junior Lewis, he was always the brains behind mm. Dave Hockaday. It seemed to me. Is that is that it then of them? No. Nope. Oh, there's more. Oh, great. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid yes, not. Right. So then we progress into the Saturday show, um, and you know he's like always, he's a joker, isn't he, Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's always he's always setting up these really good these really good jokes. There was that one with the Leeds video. It's the, the deli- what I like is it's just the the delivery. Yeah, yeah, and you'll you'll see in this the, the setup to it, the execution. It's yeah. just it's just all so good, and it's a, and it's a gag that's worth worth waiting for. Thank you very much for lending us your ears, lending us your ears even. Uh, I am so excited, and I just can't hide it, as the Pointer Sisters once said. But yes, wherever you are in the world, um, welcome along. Um, <laughs> well, this is a roller coaster of the season, isn't it? Um, but I have just got this to, to, to bring to bring to everybody's attention. Yeah, apparently um, Warburton's have announced uh, that they are shipping extra supplies of bread up to uh, Yorkshire just in case they run out of Hovis to cry into. So that's all right for you, Leeds fans. You're not going to run out of (laughs) bread. (laughs) You know that famous Hovis advert? Mm. It's filmed in like Somerset or something, wasn't it? It was really far down south. Oh, was it? Yeah, you know, the the kid pushing the bike up the hill. But even so, I mean... It's a throwaway line, maybe, but to go to the effort of all the breaking news, right. and then the why, why have Warburton? Why yeah, why have they uh, stepped in? It's Hovis's problem if there's a, a lack of supply. Is this, yeah. is this the thing? The crying into bread isn't what, isn't a thing. That's just a. It's one's a, the Hovis thing is a Yorkshire stereotype. Yeah. So you'd be crying to your Hovis because you're from what about in Yorkshire what about, anyway. What about jizzing into crisps? You could do. You mean, yeah. Have you not tried that? <laughs> um, I suppose, which would be the best, which flavour would you go best with? Salt and vinegar? Yeah, I suppose, suppose so. Some, uh, anyway. Some uh, spicy, take the edge off. Um, <laughs> so anyway, that We'll was, workshop that. Well, maybe we'll, we'll in a work. future episode, we can like bring that back with a big jingle, be like, Lester, <laughs> there's going to be a, a delivery of... Potatoes. Yeah, potatoes, so you can... And oil to cook them in. Yeah. Jizz on the oil. Is, is nuts funnier? Is nuts funnier if it's jizz? Jizzing on nuts? They don't do nuts in... Ho- I yeah, 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 KP. I was, I was... Massive KP. Oh, what, you that? see, Walkers is the the mainstream, but real heads know there's massive KP factories there. Oh, oh. that's a deep, that is a deep cut. It's Mel and so Mowbray there's... near Leicester. Yeah. Because they do pies as well, so you find jizz on a pie. Right. Also an option. Yeah. Pine, 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 pine peas. There's no limits, really. I mean, <laughs> we need to follow Chris's example. That would like really mm. work on 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 this. Like you say, yeah, workshopping it is the right thing to do. We'll go away because you know we don't want to run run too long talking about mm. this. Plan is such a good joke. Anyway, do you want to hear him talking about Leeds fans oh, uh, on his channel again? Let's. You know, it's 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 okay coming on and saying, "Hey, we're top." You know, we we're, we're like you or whatever, but. It's the constant, the fact that you're having to go on to other chats because maybe your own aren't that good. I don't know. Um, and you know, I was watching one Leeds one earlier uh, because I clicked on it by accident and he's there and he's smoking on the channel. And I'm like, really? Um, but look, I just think um, have just have some humility, you know. And we're, the only reason we're like we are and I know this is very difficult for some of the Leeds, some of the Leeds fans to understand, is that we're taking the piss out of you because of how you were to us. And in such devastating fashion as well. <laughs> I like how he's 
in the process of criticising people, for Leicester fans for going, Leeds fans for going on his Leicester channel, then he has to accidentally admits he's been watching a Leeds channel. He goes, which I clicked on by accident, yeah. um, officer. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing research um, and it went, some, a pop-up came and I, there was some stuff that, that was on the screen. Yeah. And I don't I'm know. making a Leeds documentary. Exactly. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, something yeah. like that. And he was smoking. Who was smoking? Wasn't me. Was there, I mean, there are other Leeds fan channels apart from us. So I'm, you know, mm. I've never, like the smell of smoke in this uh, sealed room <laughs> has never been, um, it, and is it, is there someone out there who's doing a Leeds podcast smoking a pipe? I was just thinking of a pipe, funnily enough, yeah. It could be go your flat, a flat cap, wouldn't it? And your brain of Hovis. Mm. <laughs> Can we move on? Yeah, go on then, let's. So, really let's, fancy a cigarette now. Stick. Have you ever smoked? Not much. No, never I, I never have. I've tried it. It, just, it wasn't for me. Didn't, oh. didn't enjoy it at this, all. This is a temple. Well, quite, yeah. yeah. So well, they won't do it on YouTube anyway. It's no. a bad example. No. no. Don't yeah, smoke don't kids. smoke kids. Yeah. Bad for you. No. Vaping, however. Mm. All, oh. those, all those flavours. Tell you what, you look so cool as and well. Don't um, eat crisps with jizz on either. Yeah, it's a mistake you don't want to make, Michael. Yeah, but if you've jizzed into the bag, throw them away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Lines TV. <laughs> Right. Do you, can we go to should we go to Ipswich first? Oh, go on. I suppose yeah. Go yeah on it's then. a natural progression. Isn't we'll, it? we'll hear from Ipswich. They are they came out of the weekend fairly well, didn't they? Really? I mean, they got a point. <laughs> which, which, the three best teams in the division. <laughs> well, they got a point. Well done. Which turns out was we, they may as well just hand them the trophy now. Was quite good. I mean, they're, they're definitely the most level-headed of the top four. Um, but listen to this. Even they're not enjoying it very much. No, I, I think at any point other than about quarter to three yesterday afternoon, you'd have been happy to be top of the league by at this stage, by two, well, sort of a point clear at the top of the league at this stage, at any point in the season, because obviously you'd have expected Leeds to beat Blackburn at home yesterday. You'd have expected Leicester to win there. And if you'd have said, look, we're going to come out this weekend, top of the league, you'd be absolutely biting your hand off for that. And yeah, but it was, it was funny because normally, because we also, we went top of the league last night as well yesterday didn't we it's not like we we were top we stayed top we actually went from second to first yesterday so it was funny normally when you're going top of the league you're normally winning a game and there's normally the we are top of the league sort of <laughs> chance that, going on but didn't really feel much of that yesterday and i don't know whether it's just part of the nerviness that was in the crowd especially on wednesday but i didn't think it was there so much yesterday but no it was a, so if i went out into town afterwards and everyone sort of the same opinion really it was all it was a little bit flat wasn't it which is incredible to think when from where we are and this position we're in, which is just utterly incredible. And Kieran McKenna will rightly be receiving the EFL Manager of the Year award tonight because of the, this job he's done so far. But yeah, what a, what a position to be in. Funny, isn't it, how they describe feeling nerves midweek, which is exactly what it was like against Sunderland. Not so much at the weekend, which kind of does reflect the journey that we went on. We, we felt like, oh, we've got that out of our system. Blackburn came around. Everyone's feeling more confident today. And look at what we did. But it's good that no one's enjoying it. No, because uh, well, quarter to three, as he mentions there, that was my that was probably my weekend nadir. I think that. Mm. Yeah, I was pretty low. I have to say, even seeing the other results come in, I was the well, just the Ipswich result really. But it did it took the edge off it a bit, I suppose, because you went. But then there's also a bit if you just want someone to end it for you, rather than going, <laughs> yeah, you still you've still actually got a really good chance of this, and you have to go oh, for fuck's sake. But we don't deserve it. But well, but we do. But if we, we do. If we get there, we will. There's points in it. Yeah. Um, Blue Monday did also have some some praise for an old friend of ours, which was nice to hear. Well, I would say I thought Aylin still looks a good player at that level. Danny Luke Aylin, I thought I thought he was really good yesterday. Yeah, yeah, he's always been a, a good Athletic, attacking strong, hasn't yeah. he? Really yeah. good. Yeah, uh, legs haven't gone gone no, there yet for him not at all. He nearly won it at the end. Did you see? No, I'm, I've basically avoided all football this weekend I've not watched um, any, I've not even watched like match of the day Premier League stuff because I've been like it'll just remind me of the bad things what happened because I saw there was a very late through ball which was almost the last, last attack of the game was it him who played that are you thinking about that or is it a shot that he had or something no they. Um, it was near the end I don't know if it was the very end but because um, I got home just for the last 15 minutes including stoppage time so five minutes and then the rest of it and um, yeah Ipswich broke up field and ailing legs not gone He's bursting through on the, the right side. Ball is played. Splits the Ipswich defence to him. But it's just, it's um, too far away from, from goal for him to take a shot. And then as he 
took a touch to kind of take it in the penalty area. It all got a bit Somerville with people kind of closing him down and then he had to kind of, it went from that moment of going like, Ailing's through to, oh no, Ailing now has to uh, pass it off to somebody. And I think there weren't enough people up with him because Middlesbrough were a bit not wanting to give the point away. But there was just that fleeting moment where I thought, and I think Bill must have thought, ooh, Ailing's going to do this. Um, but no. So we had to make do with his, uh, he got an assist though, didn't he? And also a booking for wasting time. Those were his two. But then he almost um, completed it because that would have been, that would have changed the mood, wouldn't it? A Luke Ayling mm. stoppage time winner against mm. Ipswich. That would have helped. It really would have been the thing. Instead, we're going to get a Johnny House and stoppage time winner against Leeds. <laughs> I think he might, again, talking about the- conspiracy theories, I think he might let us win. Johnny Howson? Yeah. They've nothing to play for, really, now, have they, Borough? I know mm. they're mathematically in with a chance of the playoffs still, but not really. Mm. So, and they're, and they're desperate to be part of Yorkshire, so what better way to demonstrate that than mm. to uh, do a good gesture for Yorkshire's best team? Uh, he has been um, quoted. Um, I don't know if this is trying to build up a smoke screen. This is a Leeds will be a big game, and we want to come away with three points in that. Did he wink? <laughs> uh, they've obviously got their own aims from our point of view we don't just want to throw these final three games away Yeah, right. we want to end them in the best possible manner and keep this unbeaten run going and hopefully we can take that into next season as well um, fans yeah, but- pay the money and come to see a performance and come to see us give effort that won't change from my part wink <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the rest of the boys will follow suit as well Side eye to camera. Fingers yeah. crossed behind back. But then you remember him in our last promotion season whispering to Click at full time, like, get this done. Get this done. Get I, it done. I hate Middlesbrough. I've never liked it. They give me the armband. I fucking can't get it. No one else will take it. I'm, I'm on the ear because I didn't want to move house. <laughs> right. Next. Sticking the championship. We yeah. might as well make this champ, champo heavy. Uh, there are some going to be too many clips there, so sell ahead. Member show. There'll be a few extra bits on Stick there. Stick some in there. We'll put some on there because, mm-hmm. you know. We've got them, haven't we? Yep. Done it now. Might as well. <laughs> um, Lions well, TV. Well, what, a, what a sell that is, Michael. <laughs> no, it's all really good stuff, but there's just sometimes too much good stuff. Yep. It's like when you're on your, your third bag of, of wank crisps and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit rich for my taste now, is this? Um, but you keep going anyway. I'll tell them later. Anyway, Lions TV. i got a TV. terrible image of, you know, is it It was Smith's crisp, wasn't it? But uh, salt rather shake. walk a salt and shake, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It wouldn't really shake, though, would it, in a bag? It just sort of... Anyway, Lions TV. <laughs> there's yeah. an image for you. Lions TV. One of their games obviously was beating Leicester since we, we last recorded a, a propaganda show. But I'm going to start with them beating Cardiff at the weekend. It means they're going to stay up pretty much now. Huddersfield probably haven't got it in a mouth to get uh, to get enough points. North Sheffield Wednesday. For some reason here, he's in the kitchen. I think at the stadium still. I think he because he's a sponsor or something. He gets into some areas to film some videos. Imagine not having a personal kitchen at Ellen Road. I don't think it's his personal kitchen, All but right. he's, he's okay. kind of allowed backstage to film some bits. We dealt with the other week. It's Chilino's favourite part of being mm. owner of Leeds United was, I get to go in the kitchen. <laughs> Stay in there, Master. Do anything I want. The hey, the post fans. room. <laughs> hey, I'm the, gonna... the door's locked. I can't get out. Just, in, just flicking switches in the fuse boxes. <laughs> right, here we go. Obviously, I'm not going to clean up in here. I'm going to fucking absolutely smash the pieces. You look at this little cellar. Forget about the old fucking flowers. I'm gonna smash that, the, smash the Gregory out of that. And as for this, it's going down like Nelson against the oh, that's the fucking Nelson. Actually, I've got that wrong. Napoleon's gonna go down, but when Nelson done, Waterloo, Waterloo, me all started up. Oh, 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 Capilla. <laughs> I've no idea what's going on there or in that channel as a whole. I don't think, but I really like it. The rest of the channel is a bit, generally a bit more straightforward yeah he's a bit of a maverick is this guy i do like him but i like him too which is strange because he's um probably quite intimidating in real life because <laughs> he's, he's a large bowl man as as i think all Millwall fans are yeah um with the flat cap yep. but anyway prior to that game they've beaten leicester and more points as we know equals more songs oh my god it's fucking i just can't talk ah! We can fucking pay the Welsh bastards on Saturday and Bertsy be safe. Oh, what a feeling. Can't believe it. Oh, I'm going to fucking dance all night. Lana Richie, all over the fucking ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. 
Do you want to know where he's, uh, he's going through giving little... Uh, he always does a match review, talks about a little bit about each player. So it's like, oh, did well, defended well, set pieces, won yeah. some medders. Do you want to know what he said about Tanganga in the, uh, from the Leicester game? Tanganga! 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 Brilliant! That's yeah, it. That's a good that, review. That's the end of that. And another song? Yep. Where the fuck did Kate, where did that performance come from, son? Where did it come from? Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did the colours come from? The, well, I don't know, the car don't go. No, well, we're not going down. Where did it come from? Where did it go? It come from Longman's foot. <laughs> was that Cotton Eye Joe? It was Cotton Eye Joe. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I should be ashamed of this, but as I knew that was coming from very far out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he met him in Moscow. We're of that era. It's fine. He yeah. does say he's mentioned on several videos when he goes to away games. He often ends up in Pop World, so I think that's very much his playlist. Yeah. Is for that, for that anybody, from. we've got you know international audience who might not be familiar with what Pop World is. Describe it for me. It's just a sort of, the sort of shit bar that I would have DJed in back in the day. Yeah, they play like generic oldish music, don't yeah. they? To but it's party and pop. A, music, broad, yeah. a broad appeal. Yeah, pop music. There's nothing wrong with it. You're not doing their so. marketing for them. <laughs> It's generic old music. I think it's fine. Come and have a good time. I'd, I'd, it wouldn't be my last choice. Right. Because I wouldn't want to listen to anything modern. Right. God forbid. <laughs> I have to listen to some new music. That'd would you be... listen? To, would you not go to a, listen to some trap? Or some, Probably. some grime? Some drill? Some, yeah. One of them. I wouldn't know necessarily which was which. <laughs> but I'd, yeah, I'd probably avoid. you just go for the pop world. All of those. Um, What have we got time for here? Do you want to... Bit of let's have a bit of t- the tune review, right? Because I, I actually came across this while trying to find some upset Spurs fans. Instead, I found Newcastle going two 0 up, um, and this happening. Um, we're in again here, Gordon. It's two 0 It's two 0 <laughs> and Newcastle United are demolishing Tottenham here at St James's Park. Grab your granny because Granddad says I want to make love to you right now, Grandma. <laughs> Right. So you're grabbing your granny. Yep. Because your granddad said. Yep. Why does this need an intervention? Is there a lot of questions? I don't I don't know. Is everybody all right? <laughs> Doing this stuff. You think people are okay? I don't people know if worry is. about them. You see you've seen the start of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or the Willy Wonka film. Mm. With Grandpa Joe and Jose is it Grandma Josephine and all that there's like four of them. Mm. All sharing a bed. And it that. turns out there's fuck all wrong with him. Yeah. He just couldn't be asked before. Yeah. That's the start of the film, isn't it? That's the one. He's not got out of bed for ages, then he gets a chance to go to a chocolate factory and he's like, oh yeah, fuck it, I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that's exactly as Roald Dahl wrote it as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what have you doing? Uh, uh, you've got a golden ticket. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've always said I couldn't get out of bed. Turns out I can. <laughs> and turns out I can for a chocolate factory. Are you suggesting that Grandpa Joe was a benefits cheat? Absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Get the DWP on his ass. Get right. those anyway. benefits cut. Oh, they didn't look they didn't look great in fairness. They were they were all in the one bed. Um yeah, that's what I was getting at. I just wondered if that was some sort of twisted sort of wonka scenario. It's Christ, that is a that is a twist. Anyway, 4 0 is at it again, isn't he? What a hell of that is from Fabian Shea! And it's 4 0 to Newcastle United, and boy does he deserve a goal! That is fantastic! So let's go and get Granny again! She wants to head down to the nudist beach. It's fabulous stuff. It's 4 0 the tune. <laughs> There's a silence. There's an eerie silence. I'm just deeply confused. Why? Well, I don't think you even have to have to ask. It, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what, should we just move on? Yeah. All right. People are like asking questions. Difficult questions. There's Difficult no nudist There's no nudist speech there. Like North Shields or Tynemouth, it's not. And and even so, why would? Let's move on. All right, let's just move on. Yeah, okay, let's move on. Let's move on to something a lot more sensible. Yeah, good. They close close out on some some right headed thinking. Yeah. I I didn't want to listen to Southampton fans because I thought they'd be happy because they they're actually the one team out of the top four who've, who've had a good week, aren't they? They all of a sudden is it in their own hands now? I think to go up pretty much anyway because nah, well, they got players on Leicester, haven't they? So I think yeah. that, I think there's. There are ways they can they can still do it. So I thought I'll see what Matt Letizia is up to. I expected a little clip of him on something else, just talking about his usual. I mean, recently he suggested that the government were controlling the weather. Yeah, I think that's maybe what made me think of it. I thought if I can find a little clip of him saying that or something, 
great. It'll be funny. We can all move on. Instead, I found him on a, a YouTube channel of someone called Tom Numbers. Right. Um, it's an hour long. I watched all of it. Yep. Now, Tom is into something called Simple Gematria. Do you know what that is? I did not. Uh, Moscow, you, you're, you're, a, you're a man of words. Do you know anything about Gematria? Uh, isn't that board game that they turned into a movie? Have I stolen your joke there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Explain it to us. Right. It's translating letters into numbers. The simple version. There are different versions. There's like Hebrew versions right. and various complicated ones. He does the simple one because yep. I think you should understand it's probably better to keep it simple. Um, but yeah, A equals number one, B equals two. You can therefore like... Spoiler alert, Z equals 26. Exactly. Wow. So Wow. So if you get, you know, you add up the, you can add up the letters of a word to create numbers. Right. For example, so like Dan, you go in four, add one, whatever. Thir- so, 13 for N, by the way, I think. Fair enough, whatever it is. So you get like a number from that. Right. That's where he's coming from. That seems to be the gist of his channel. But they start off at, um, talking about the eclipse that has just been in America. And the, he seems to think that it's not just like a, thing that happens with planets but they're significant events right because they'll bring all the stuff right and to explain part of what is going on here is there have been two eclipses in america in the last i think one was 2017 one was obviously like the last week and if you can trace obviously where they go where you get the best view of the eclipse it right. kind of goes in a line because of the way planets go and stuff so you, the where these two lines of eclipse have crossed on the map like well, where, where, where in, do the spunky crisps come into this it, well, makes you think. <laughs> they, they didn't mention it, which... Right. Why haven't they mentioned it? Yeah. So, there have been two eclipses in America. They've gone on different lines across America. Right. And they've crossed in the middle, obviously. There's a, if you wanted to draw one on top of the other, there's a cross. So yes. that's why he's talking about a cross. Um, <laughs> now, it's, ha- it's hard to... And you watch this for an hour, you say? Yeah. I'm just going to play the first clip because it's hard to explain because it makes virtually no sense. Okay. So what do you think then if you if you think something will manifest itself over the next few weeks or months or whatever? What sort of stuff are you, are you thinking about there in your head? Okay. What comes to your mind? So I th- so with the two, well, there's three actually, but you'll know that that line that it took yesterday went across a whole bunch of cities called Nineveh. And Nineveh is a biblical reference to, you know, you've got Jonah in the well, and Nineveh teaching the people to change and repent. And so it's like, well, someone, however many centuries ago, when America was formed, must have built those cities on purpose. That was, that's, I mean, it looks like it to me, it's like, Oh, that's so it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, yeah, well, yeah. the eclipse would have been able to be worked out by astronomers you know, thousands of years ago. Yeah. So whoever built those cities must have known about that because the other one they had in two, in 2017, the cross. So there was a cross and then there's another one. So it's, it's like a cross like that. And then there's another one. It almost like makes this kind of a, like an alpha yeah. thing. But if you take those two. Like the Freemason sign almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew. <laughs> So someone knew. Right, I'm glad they ended up laughing there. What I enjoyed was the, the 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 part of that where he kind of first went down the rabbit hole and he said, "You'll know that," and then said about those cities and the biblical reference. It's like I didn't, I, nobody, I don't know. And even the bits he could look up, like when stuff in America was built, he's like, "I don't know when that was built." But people knew. People knew when they were building Age, those cities. Oh, it was ages ago, wasn't it? They were doing them in these lines because they knew about the eclipses that were to come. Yeah. Because they'd have been out of charter, so they built some cities in line with those. Are you following it, Moscow? I think Moscow slipped into a coma. Yeah, and this ends with um, Southampton going up. Well, that's only the start of it. There's another clip. I, I'm going to apologise for making everyone. I feel like we're all getting progressively more stupid as we listen to this. But th- this is the, well, this is it for the whole hour. By the way, there's about a five minute period where they talk about who should play instead of Harry Maguire for England. Right. But the rest of it is just all this. Does that bring the Easter Island statues into play? <laughs> it sadly doesn't. They don't talk about any... I think they might talk about some numbers stuff with it, actually. I was going to say, we need to, we need to while we play this, we write out what the numbers are for Maguire and 
Mm. Go from there, maybe. We say need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could. Could also not. Anyway, let, let's just hear the, the talk back in about talking about the cross again, the crossing of these two paths and, and what else that might relate to. And I think there's just a lot in here to, to maybe make you think. Food for thought is what I'll call it. Right. To answer your question, what I think in numbers, A is one, B is two, C is three. The 24th letter is X. We're now in the year 2024. You've got Twitter, changed its name to X. You've got these crypto coins, X. You've got X marks the spot. I think it's very interesting that there's, there, was, there was a huge solar eclipse X that was completed yesterday mm. over America. Um, Salem, even Jerusalem, and I know people go on about Israel. I think there's two versions of it. I think there's one that got infested and taken over. And I think there was an original, original biblical, you know, that's where Jesus did his ministry. Um, but even in the word Jerusalem, there's a USA in the middle of it. It's right in the middle. And this wasn't bang on in the middle, but it was across the heartlands of America. It was, you know, it was across the middle of America where this X was formed. Where this X was formed, X marks the spot, there was a little town called Carbondale. So in 2017, the first one goes across. Look, there's an X there, the scaffold. But yesterday it completed. So where the other eclipse yesterday went across, the X marks the spot position. Rachel was there with her kids yesterday, actually. It went over a town called Carbondale. In numbers, when you spell the word Carbondale, it comes to 99. 99 comes to ascension, comes to judgment. It also comes to patriot. It also comes to the number. When you spell out the word 13, it comes to 99. Yesterday, guess what number of the year, the day of the year it was yesterday? It was the 99th day of the year, 99. And next month's the spot on Carbondale and it comes to 99 in numbers. So I think a lot of these things were planned, um, but I think you mentioned that group. <laughs> Whether it was them that built it or another shadow group that kind of mirrored them but was on the reverse, a good, a good bunch. Mm. Whoever built those cities, I think knew this juncture, this point, and I feel whether it was one group that maybe wasn't good did it to bring their stuff about, I feel, because I'm the eternal optimist, I feel that good guys have used that. I think God's used that in a good way now. But it also could have been that it was good guys that built it in the first place. I guess we don't know yet. I, no. can't, I can't prove that. You can't prove it. What I will say is, might just have been better to have kept him in a job on Soccer Saturday as a pundit. Just keep him busy. It is, it is a tough watch because it's fun. It's funny. It's obviously funny because it's ridiculous. Like the whole thing is this: it's just a bloke saying numbers, and mathematicians that they're going right. You can. Just, I mean, you could if you like letters and numbers, just watch countdown, play Scrabble. But you can see in his face, he's like, "This is it now." Fuck. There's no one else will speak to me apart from this guy. Like, yeah. I've I've left myself with like these are my mates now, and I just want to speak to Jeff Stelling again. Yeah, like I want. I want Paul Merson to ring me. <laughs> but instead, this is it. I just, there's a man talking about Carbondale and how that's 99 and Patriots 99 and. Ice cream 99. Well, makes you think, doesn't it? I'm not really. X marks the spot yeah. where the ice cream van is, if you think about it. Moscow. Hi. <laughs> are, you, um, are, you, are you looking some of this stuff up just because you wanted to check it? Check it's all legit. I was just. I mean, I'm trying to pass the time. Predictably, uh, Carbondale was established in 1853 as a crossroads of the railroad industry. So it seems like the more likely um, explanation is yes, to do with transport links, probably a river there. All the reasons why you learnt at school why people built settlements, where they built them. No, it's because of it's because of future eclipses crossing over at that point. That is yeah. why. I realise how how dumb I've been now. I think uh, the one thing that does make me feel a little bit better is um, a few people suggested that the my theory that um, Leeds players weren't shooting because of goalkeepers time wasting 
um, was regarded as crackpot by a few. He was a bit crackpot by a few mainstream thinkers. But now I'm feeling pretty comfortable about that. Now you know, <laughs> that's actually quite a sound theory. Well thought. I did think when I suggested it, I was like, "This is just an idle thought that I had during the game." Of like, oh, maybe they don't want to shoot because uh, it will take two minutes to get the ball back into play, and it Sean's yeah, maybe maybe that's a factor. Um, but now I'm I'm pretty willing to do the research, go deep on it, do a, a two hour podcast. If I have to explain it to Matt Letitier at some point, that's just the price I have to pay for uh, seeing truths that others have missed. Um, but yeah, so maybe I'm on to uh, a different path now. Corner, by the way, an X corner seventy three. I don't know what that means. You're just well, saying corner seventy. Oh, for right. Oh, is, is he playing Scrabble? We're just doing the old. This is the number one. The number one thing, yeah. Triple. Corner, 73. What's, let's see what goal kick is, shall we? Hmm? Are you ready? Goal kick, 69. That's right. rude, isn't it? I think I think what we need to do now <laughs> is... For Leicester Till I Die podcast. We, we need to end, day. end this show because I think people have just started drifting off. And, if, and if you are getting behind this stuff in the comments, rest assured, they'll just be deleted from there and we will never engage with them. And you'll never know. Bye-bye. The Square Ball Podcast.